What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and today I'm joined by your 2022 Tampa Pro Champion and top six finisher in the Mr. Olympia. I'm pleased to welcome Akeem Williams back to Desktop Bodybuilding. Mate, how are you doing? Obviously off that win in Tampa. I'm good, man. Uh, thank you so much for having me, man. I appreciate it. Bro, it's a pleasure, and um, I've been looking forward to having you back on because last time, obviously, it brought some um, good luck to you because you said, I want the first call out him in Mr. Olympia, and many mm -hmm. people believe you'd get that, and you got it, man. Yeah. You got me Olympia, you got the first call out. i got to imagine that was a pretty good feeling, Um, you know, obviously <laughs> predicting it and saying that's what I want and, and nailing it, man, because not many people do that and make those high high calls and actually do it. Like Nick Walker's one that's done it the last couple of years, but not too many others, so... How did that feel, I suppose, coming out of that Mr. Olympia in, uh, what was it? Uh, that, 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 that was an awesome feeling, you know. And, uh, the sky was the limit for me then, but unfortunately, you know, just had a little bit of a problem with, you know, the, the coach I was working at the time. He had some issues that he couldn't coach me anymore. So 2021 was a rough year for me, man. I had to switch coaches and uh, try to figure out a lot, you know, working with somebody different. You know, they're trying to figure out your body and stuff like that. So. You know, I didn't do as well as I wanted to in 2021 because of all the changes I had to go through and the adjustments I had to make. But, you know, I still was able to get back on the Olympia stage and I still was able to crack uh, top 10. So, yeah. still successful, you know. Yeah, which is, you know, saying, oh, I had a down year. I was top 10 in the Olympia. You know, he's still top 10 in the Olympia, <laughs> which is... Um... I mean, when, you, when, you, when you, you set the bar so high at 2020 and you came sixth place, you know, everybody's expecting you to take that next leap and get into that top five, you know. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. You know, my coach, you know, he had some personal issues that he had to deal with. So, you know, yeah. I had to make a decision and do, you know, figure out some stuff on my own and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. And that's understandable. Now, did you go then after um, obviously working with Oscar and then going to, did you go to Abdullah and then go to Justin? How did that sort of work out with the coaching situation? No, no. I actually uh, work with, after, you know, Oscar, Oscar had some personal issues he had to take care of. So, me and uh, Justin teamed up for the Puerto Rico show and, you know, got the win, but, you know, certain things and some things didn't really, really pan out the way I wanted it to. And I decided to, uh, me and Abdullah go way back. You know, we've been friends for a long time. And, you know, I was, I was, I was, I wanted the opportunity to work with him. So I decided to, you know, work with him for the 2021 Arnold and the Olympic, uh, 2021 Arnold pretty much, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, obviously, working with Justin, you guys put together a pretty damn good package, man. And I wanted to touch on something you went through, and you actually mentioned it in an interview, I think, with Ron Harris after the Tampa Pro, was that, you know, you total, totaled your card during your prep, and you've had some injury issues, and you haven't been able to lift the same way and all that sort of stuff. So it's really uh, an amazing thing that you came into this show against a really, really high-quality lineup, and you took it yeah. out. So what actually happened with the the car accident? And what, I suppose, injuries did you sustain from it? Well, I was, uh, I think I was about four weeks in, into the prep, four or five weeks into the prep. And I was on the way to training one of my clients on the highway. And this guy, I think he was dropping his uh, sister-in-law off to the airport. So he was speeding and everything like that. And the traffic just automatically just came to a stop and he couldn't stop in time. So he just, he slammed his car into me and he's hit me so hard. <laughs> that uh, he pushed me into like a whole bunch of other cars. So it was like wow. a whole pile up. And I was caught in the middle of it. His car actually caught on fire. That's how high I already hit. Luckily, wow. my car held up pretty well. You know, I got some like crazy whiplash, my neck, my back, shoulders, everything like that. So I was pretty messed up, man. Yeah, you know? I bet. So, so what injuries did you, mm -hmm. I suppose, did you sustain and how did that affect your training I, during your prep? And I definitely had some sci sciatic uh, nerve problem and uh, my, one of my discs in my lower back came out. So it was impinging on my nerves. So I had like no feeling in my right foot and stuff like that. And a lot of pain, like a lot of pain. Like I couldn't squat, couldn't deadlift, couldn't even like lay on the bed sometimes. I had like a whole, uh, <laughs> my bed is like a queen size bed <laughs> and I was sleeping on the edge because that's the only how I could get some kind of relief to oh, actually right, like, go yeah. to bed at night. So it was rough, man. It was rough dealing with all of that and still trying to prep for a show, man. Like some yeah. point I actually thought about like pulling out, but I stuck with it and I, I finished off the prep, you know? 
Yeah, man. Uh, like I like I mentioned before this interview started, I know that exact, well, not the exact pain, obviously, because I didn't have all the other stuff and the whiplash and stuff. But like when I hurt my back, it was weeks and I was still like, you know, I was getting in the shower and holding on to the top of the shower to take the, mm-hmm. the pressure off my back because the pain was sort of so extreme. And you're sort yeah. of just sitting down for a while and you're laying sideways. I have my always had my right leg straight. And then you go, oh, now nah, maybe I can get up and just do this. It'll be fine. And then you walk to the kitchen, you're just in agony. And it's like, mm-hmm. people don't realize how crazy it is because you lose that feeling in your right leg. And I was sort of like, when I did try to walk, I'd trip over a bit and you just, yeah. you just it feels like it, you're it, just it, totally. It, it, it's, it's bad, man. And like I said, back pain ain't nothing to play with, man. There were nights where that, that thing would wake me up from my sleep and I would have to like stay up. Because that's the only time I would like, I would feel like, I would feel, I would lay over the kitchen sink just standing there. Cause that's only how I could get some kind of relief from it, bro. That's you know, exactly. so <laughs> I've been there, yeah. Just standing on the kitchen yeah. sink, and you go, I don't want to have to walk back. <laughs> you just go, mm-hmm. yeah. And you almost can't at times. Like when I first did it, it was, yeah, there's no physical way I could walk. When I first did mine, mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I can't, like, even if I wanted to and just go through the pain, it's just not able to. So I totally, man, it, it actually blows my mind that he's able to compete because unless you've had that sort of pain yeah. and that sort of, I suppose, you know that sort of thing where you actually mentioned me before the, you know, before the interview, you, you know, still don't properly have a hundred percent of that feeling back in your. Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't. I don't. Yeah. So yeah, my right that, foot is still good messed up. I was lucky enough. You I was actually, I, do you have any issues activating your quads or anything with that sort of thing? Because I imagine well, I, I never trained. That's what, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Luckily I was able to find a really good chiropractor, really good uh, doctor that was able to, use his uh, tricks for many many years of practicing to get the disc back in place and relieve a lot of the pain and you know some of the numbness in my leg and everything like that it's still in my foot but not not my legs i still was able to get like contractions and stuff like that yeah so i started you know he told me you know exactly what to do how to train and stuff like that and i started you know listen to his ideas and i was able to you know just make keep making like small progress yeah, for sure. You know, to the point where towards the ending of the prep, I was able to actually put like 315 on my back and squat again. I bet that felt sort of good in a way, yeah. but still at the same time, man, compared to what you've done in the past, like you're sort of yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. you've done like, yeah. what's the most you've squatted again? I think we've talked about it, but what's the most eight, you've done? Eight, I did 850 before. I actually 850? have a record down. Yeah, yeah, 850. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Because everyone looks at that Ronnie Coleman video. 800 pounds or 805 or whatever he did and you've done mm-hmm. 850 so i don't think you yeah. get that credit for that man that's that's absolutely i don't crazy. i don't you know I'm, I'm i don't know for some reason i'm one of the bodybuilders that people just kind of like brush off like i'm kind of like this weekend i was the most hated bodybuilder on the internet most hated so i'm kind of i'm kind of used to all of that you know i'm like whatever man you yeah. know it's so funny when someone wins a show and, you know, just say, because I put up a poll after prejudging on um, mm-hmm. on desktop bodybuilding's community page. And, you know, he had some people saying Quentin could win it. There's some people saying Akeem and there's some people saying Kamal. Now there was, you know, a high percentage saying Kamal. So whenever that happens, if there's more than 20% saying that you shouldn't win it, you're going to cop some mm-hmm. blowback. Now, obviously yeah. the blowback was obviously people saying Kamal should have won and some people said that. And I still had plenty of people in my comments saying Akeem deserved it. He was the thickest dude on the stage. And I made yeah. a comment in on some things. I said, look, it was, you know, people say apples and oranges. It was really apples, oranges, and some other sort of fruit with it, man. Because it was like Kamal, the much shorter guy coming from the 212, shredded to the mm-hmm. bone. You, you're obviously big and in good condition and just absolutely enormous. And you got Quentin, who's the real shape guy. So it was like, mm-hmm. you know, three sort of different sort of the shapes, um, which I found cool. And it made it like, if I was judging that man, that would have been such a hard job because it's really comes down <laughs> to what you, not just what you prefer, but what you sort of, I suppose, rank as the most important things to bodybuilding. Um, so yeah. obviously they went with you for the win, but like you said, the most hated man <laughs> in bodybuilding. And yeah. really, you didn't make the decision. You just came in at your exactly. best in the circumstances. Exactly. And honestly, I thought you should have been praised for the way you looked. But how did you, I suppose, how do you deal with copying that blowback after you've just won a contest where you should be ecstatically happy? And obviously that affects people. I know Ian Valier has copped it before in the past as well. I remember him famously. I, I don't. New approach, this, so. To be honest with you, the, the majority of the people that are talking and saying a whole bunch of stuff, they weren't, they weren't at the show. So how can you, you can judge a show if you weren't at the show physically, you know? A show is totally different in person versus like looking at photos and stuff like that. Everybody looks good in photos. You know, there's the videos and there's the live videos and the live viewing with your eyes is where you see different things, you know? So if you weren't at the show and you want to talk all that talk, go right ahead. It don't bother me at the end of the day, man. You know, I'm yeah. used to that. 
you know? So stuff like that don't affect me. And I've, I've gone to the point in my career where I don't respond to any negative stuff. You yeah. want to be negative? You want to send me a whole bunch of messages? Knock yourself out. You know, at the end of the day, you don't pay my bills. You know, you have no, like, bearing of what I, what I do in my life. So I'm not going to let that affect me, you know? Yeah, but that's it. And I think the longer you're in it and the more you get of it, the more it sort mm-hmm. of numbs you to it as well. Because I mean, I'm like, yeah. I, I think anyone that uh, at this point is well-known um, in bodybuilding mm-hmm. in terms of being competitor or, you know, well-known in any any stature, regardless of, of how many good things you do or how good you come in and do your best and all that sort of stuff. At some point, there's going to be a whole heap of fans of the <laughs> other guy that are going to say, uh, it, it, win. he it, has this, he, this is wrong with his physique. So any little thing that you've got on your physique or whatever someone doesn't like, you're going to cop it at some point. And I think and there's it, a certain way to do it, you know? Yeah, it's so sad because I'm actually one of the good guys in this sport, man. You don't ever hear anything bad about me. I keep my nose clean, keep my head down, and just train, man. A lot more bodybuilders should follow after me and follow the things I do, you know? Yeah, for sure. Definitely, man. Uh, I just want to bring this up (laughs) as well because this was so impressive to me. I saw this go up by your coach, um, Justin, Mm -hmm. and, man, your quads look absolutely outrageous. It's something you don't really get credit for, but the fact that you were able to go through that injury and have quads that look Mm -hmm. like that, just... yeah absolutely mind-blowing and obviously that side leg as well but you're sort of famous for mm-hmm. after that olympia where you played yeah. six but basically everyone noticed that side leg and that was the first thing i noticed man um when you competed at that olympia so i just wanted to give you a bit of credit there as well and um hopefully this doesn't play for sound oh, there we go the, these guys are sick i believe it's um is it gilco productions they make some awesome videos as well i want to give them a shout out because mm-hmm. I, I absolutely love this man and you're actually able to see the physique properly at least mm-hmm. somewhat because obviously those lights in the background um going off while you're posing makes it hard for sort of photos and videos but um yeah. what do you think of this what do you think about the ba- background lighting and um all that sort of stuff do you think they should have black backdrops yeah definitely i think it's a little bit distracting but i understand you know it's almost a, you know it's a production promotion and everything like that so i get it but at the same time is it you know it does it does distract or take you away from the physique itself so for sure you know? definitely yeah but yeah, I thought you looked really, really good, man. So I just wanted to address that and um, yeah, get your opinions. But in your opinion, like looking at photos, being subjective, obviously you can't even do it properly yourself because every time I've competed, I've gone, do I have a good stage presence? Like how do I come across like actually seeing it in the flesh? And I've always wondered, and I'm sure you're probably maybe somewhat the same, I'm not too sure, but what do you think after seeing the videos and the photos and all that sort of stuff of you being compared to obviously Kamal and Quinn? I mean, they actually gave me praises for my stage presence at that show. They said I was one of the only guys that were able, like, holding the poses the longest and, like, you know, not shaking and, you know, stumbling and everything like that. So I got some praises this weekend for that, you know. So I think my, my stage presence is a lot better from where I started to now. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot improved, you know. I'm a lot more confident than stage and everything like that. So still some, still some stuff I need to work on and everything like that. But overall, you know, it's definitely a lot, a lot more improved than uh, – it shows, you know, it shows in the confidence and everything like that when, when I walk out on stage, you know, because I know what I what I look like, you know, I don't have to like fake it or anything like that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's completely changed as well. Like you said, your stage presence has come a long way because I've been watching you mm-hmm. since, you know, early days when you were, mm-hmm. I remember when it was you and Juan Morel early days of being a pro mm-hmm. and you guys were going at the New York pro and all that sort of stuff. And I remember yeah. seeing your physique then compared to what it is mm-hmm. now and your stage presence then compared to now. Yeah. And it's just absolutely yeah. night and day, man. So you're yeah. almost a completely different bodybuilder. You know, you were so raw yeah. back then. Um, so <laughs> but um, where do you think your physique on the weekend ranks in terms of your all-time best? And how does it rank compared to that um, 2000, uh, 2020 Mr. Olympia? Uh, I mean, I had some good looks, man. Uh, 2017, 2018, I think, uh, Toronto Pro. Yeah. I had brought a really good package for that. Um also, the Indie Pro, uh, I think it was 2017, maybe, maybe. Yep. I, I bought a really good package for that where I was second also. And, um, of course, 2020 Olympia was a great package. You know, Puerto Rico was a good package, too. This package was actually, I was actually happy with this package, you know. Yeah. Of course, I, you know, the back double bicep was, you know, still needs some work. But the back last spread, you know, it was a killer shot. You know, my abs definitely improved. Nobody could say, like, oh, he needs to train abs anymore. Yeah, you know <laughs> that shot definitely improved a lot. You know that was one of the things like a lot of people would say like, "Oh, you don't train abs, you need to get his abs deeper and everything like that." Well, I mean, I, I really work hard on that, and I got my abs a lot better. They look a lot better. You know, yeah. and I still manage to keep my tiny waist. You know, so I have yeah. a lot. I have a lot going for me because as much as you know, big as I am and everything like that, 
I still have one of the smallest weights up there, you know? So Yeah, absolutely. Now, Justin Miller, your coach, he said several times in interviews, I've heard him say it. Um, he said, he may have even said it to me privately. I'm not, I can't even remember, but he said, reckons you're the best bodybuilder in the world. I've heard him say that quote. Um, mm-hmm. And he's always puts, you know, well, not always, but said things around it. Like he just hasn't quite realized yet, or we haven't got there yet or whatever. What do you think when he says that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I can't, I can't speak for him. You know, he sees what he sees and that's his opinion and everything like that. But I do, you know, I do appreciate the comments and, you know, I'll take it as a compliment, you know, and for me, you know, it just makes me focus and work harder to achieve the goal. And my ultimate goal is to basically win a Mr. Olympia or actually win the Honor Classic one day. That's my ultimate goal. So it just makes me, you know, work harder and try to achieve those goals. Yeah, for sure. Because in that at Mr. Olympia, when you're standing next to Brandon Curry, who I'm a, I'm a big fan of, and I know Brandon, and um, some of the shots, like certain ones, I was like, whoa, <laughs> like I was very surprised, you know, because I was like, you know, I was probably closest with Brandon out of anyone competing in the Olympia in terms of who I talked to and stuff. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I was like, this is insane. But Akeem is, you know, really challenging like a branded in shots and i was like whoa and so it goes to show that bodybuilding is all about comparisons because i think you compare very well with branded in certain shots as well so i was like okay yeah keem is going to be a force to be reckoned with and i think you still definitely got that in your physique man so i can't wait to see see that sort of be realized now obviously um someone who your coach was coaching um back i believe it was in the 2000 was it last year's mr olympia the year before where george peterson um, you know, tragically passed away. Um, I know you trained with him a bit for back because he had one of the sort of best backs in the IFB Pro League. Yeah. How did that affect you, man? Because obviously George seemed like a really stand-up guy. Like I don't know anyone that said one bad word about him. Obviously he's only days, two days out from the Olympia or something like that. And then this tragic news comes in. Now, how did that affect you at the Olympia? How did it affect you after? All that sort of stuff. It, it was hard. It's a hard pill to swallow because, you know, a few days before that news and everything like that, you know, I was training with him on every week, every week, you know, we were training together every week, we were training back together, we trained legs and everything like that. So it definitely was a hard pill to swallow, you know, and especially being at the Olympia and having to compete and not having to like, you know, let that emotional side take over because, you know, once that happened, you know, it's all downhill after that. So it was, it was hard to deal with. And not only that, you know, a week before that, the guy that also introduced me to bodybuilding passed away also. Yeah, so that was, um, that was with Leon Brown. Leon Brown, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that, yeah. that too. So you you went through a bit, man. So where what yeah. year was that exactly? Just refresh my memory. For what? Um, that George passed away. Was that the 2020? 2021. 2021, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't sure if it was 2020 or 21 in my head then. The 2021. But like being at the Olympia, like hearing that news, um, mm-hmm how like what did you do man and what was it i suppose feeling like around the olympia because i remember just obviously being back in australia it was, hearing it, about it, it was very it was very uh very sad very uh gray down depressing mm-hmm. like you didn't even want to be on that stage you know because like you said george george was an amazing person you know everybody who knows him loves him and you know he's just a stand-up guy you know and like i said you know training with him every week getting to know him better and stuff like that his personality me and him cracking jokes the whole time in the gym and uh, just all of a sudden this person not here anymore. It was very hard to accept, man. You know, yeah, it, it was very, it, hard to I imagine it's a very confronting feeling as well. Like obviously yeah. being there, expecting him yeah. to be on stage. It's just yeah. everyone that spoke about it in the athletes meeting and all that sort of stuff. I heard it was very, yeah, a very gray somber sort of feeling about yeah. that sort yeah. of stuff. Cause everyone knew what had happened and it was sort of, I'm mm-hmm. sure people were whispering about it and like, Oh, do you know what happened? All that sort of stuff. And people being yeah. you know, upset and concerned and stuff. So I can only imagine sort of what that felt like now. Are you done for 2022 in terms of anything outside of the Olympia? So far now? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I, you know, I, I went to Tampa, achieved the goal, got the qualification. I don't see any point in like keep doing shows and competing and stuff like that because at the end of the day, it's your body and it's a lot of stress and everything like that. So, you know, if I achieve my goal, get my qualification, I don't need to go do another show, you know? Yeah. I, now, don't, I don't know what the prize money. I don't know what the prize money at Texas is, but just say Texas, you know, many shows are $10,000 for first, right? Mm-hmm. Just say Texas was 20000 or $25,000 for first. Would you have stayed <laughs> on another week and done Texas? <laughs> I, it, definitely, it definitely would have been tempting. Yeah. <laughs> because... 
the one thing I hear in pro bodybuilding now is like, once you qualify, most guys just hang it up, you know? Like, I mean, I know mm -hmm. Ian last year, he went on and did a, a few shows after he qualified and he had some people coming at him saying, oh, you're taking other people's spots and stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe they yeah, should yeah. just get more points or, or, or you know, yeah. try to be yeah. you know, uh, another level better. So I have no problem with guys doing multiple shows or that sort of stuff. But I always do wonder, I'm like, it almost is like these small shows are always just a ticket to the Olympia for everyone where it should be like the title and the prize money and the, and the prestige and all that sort of well, stuff. Well, well, for, for, for me, for me, for me, Tampa pro was the title because I yep. won it in 2016. That was the first show I ever won. So six years later, I went back and did it again and I actually won it again. So it was a title for me, you know, that's cool. That, yeah. that show would always be, have a special place in my heart because that's where I got my first win. So it definitely was, a, the, I picked that show. This year, I actually picked the Tampa Pro to do it. So it definitely was a title for me, you know. That's awesome, man. I, I love that. But yeah, I would love it to be back to where, you know, maybe prize money incentivize guys to to get on stage more because we have seen some lineups earlier in the year that haven't been as stacked. But you obviously chose the most yeah. stacked one to jump into so far in the contest. I, season. I, 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 I said that as I'm like, listen, as soon as I pick a show, it's going to be like the most stacked show. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, for some reason, I'm the most hated guy, and I'm the most I'm the guy that everybody wants to beat. I I I can't I not even like it doesn't even matter anymore. Like for some reason, like I said, most hated guy on the internet right now, and I'm the guy that everybody wants to beat. I'm like the benchmark now. So <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny, man. Like if you'd done any of those shows earlier in the year and looked how you looked at Tampa, I guarantee there'd be a hype train behind you. But just because yeah. like a certain percentage of people thought that you know this guy could have won or that guy could have won. It, it mm -hmm. goes away a little bit, but obviously hearing yeah. your story, uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you'd be able to bring something hopefully better, even better to the Olympia, which I thought was a great package you bought to Tampa as well. So I was just wondering one more thing before we wrap this thing up. Now, obviously your training changed a little bit. Was it just like leg training and back training or did like chest or anything change? change? Because I chest, your chest, 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 huge. chest changed a little bit too. Cause I had like, like when, when I got hit from behind, I hit me forward and I actually hit the steering wheel. And my shoulders was a little bit like my right shoulder. So I've been getting a lot of work done on that. So as far as like barbell stuff, I had to like stay away from that. I had to use more dumbbells and stuff like that. And it, it, it's, it's helping a lot because <laughs> I'm noticing a difference in terms of, you know, the way I bench press and how heavy I'm able to go. So maybe it was a blessing in disguise, you know. I get yeah. a better pump when using dumbbells than using the barbell. So I did, Um, I actually did a little video. I don't know if you saw it. I think I tagged you in it potentially mm -hmm. um and i put it on instagram and youtube uh and all that sort of stuff and it's just a minute video and i basically had five takeaways from a tampa pro and one of them was that you have the thickest chest on the planet because it was absolutely <laughs> insane i don't know if you saw it in my videos but you don't yeah i think, I, think I, I did see the, the comments <laughs> man it blew my mind like your chest is yeah. literally just like pushing out from your body and I, was, uh -huh. I went through some other guys um from the olympia and whatnot and i'm like no one's does it to that level <laughs> like i was like wow so <laughs> I felt like I had to mention that a few times because it actually yeah, blew yeah. my mind. So I think your chest was, definitely did improve. And I was actually yes, wondering that um, after mm -hmm. I saw that interview with Ron Harris, I was like, I wonder if he changed his chest chest training and it works better yeah, because, I, man. Yeah, yeah I, re I realized that the dumbbells work better for me, you know. So going forward, I'm going to stick with the dumbbells instead of doing barbell bench press and all this other stuff, you know. Yeah, for sure. I, I know mm -hmm. some guys that do one or the other and maybe get great chest development. And it's just, I suppose it's a mm -hmm. person by person sort of thing, but d dumbbells definitely work. So you've definitely worked. Yeah, it definitely works. Yeah. But man, do oh, you oh. have anything you want to plug anyone you want to thank or anything you want to mention before we wrap up this? Interview? Um, Definitely. man. I, I, I can't stop praise my uh, sponsors, muscle meds. You know, I, I, without them, I wouldn't be here without their support and continued support for all those years I've been with them you know, I would not be able to bodybuild. So thank you, Gerard Dente and the whole Muscle Men's team. And um, yeah, just getting ready for the Olympia and about to go kill it. And also, um, <laughs> I appreciate all the negative and positive out there. Because like I said, if you're not talking about me, then, you know, if you're not getting any kind of blowback from whatever, then, you, you know, you become irrelevant. So the fact that I'm getting all the heat that I'm getting, I still appreciate it because my name is being mentioned. So thank you. Whoever <laughs> is mean all negative, being positive, I appreciate all the support. Yeah. And it's it's funny, man. It, it, like I said earlier, it does harden you the more you cop it and the more you get it. And I think just the the higher you climb up the ranks, the more you get it. I mean, I look at like Brandon Curry, like he is copped mm -hmm. so much and he just sort of sits back quietly. Sometimes you might just mention it or something, but he just sort of takes it all in and goes, yeah. 
you know, he's got family. He's mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, that's more important, you know? And it, I think yeah. me watching him, like, cause you know, even just me doing YouTube, man, I get comments and some of them are nasty sometimes, or someone will randomly message me a nasty comment about my content or something like that. And mm-hmm. in the past it would bother me, but now I'm like, what would Brandon do? I'm like, he would just be like, yeah, whatever, just be nice to him back and just go on about your day. And I think it's more people just supporting one person and then just, okay, you're the guy in the firing line because they're mm-hmm. a fan of Kamal or a fan of yeah. whoever yeah. and whatnot. So you're just the guy in the firing line and they don't really take, I suppose, your personality or anything into, into account. And obviously there are attacks on your body, so it can be pretty sort of hurtful or impactful, but Man, I like the way you handle things and the way you take things Thank on the chin, man, because you're not someone who's just going to turn around to, you know, maybe like a 15-year-old kid that's talked shit about you and say, fuck you, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I like that about you, man. So um, I just wanted to give you a shout out about that. But anyway, thank you so much, Keen, for coming on uh, Desktop Bodybuilding just days after that Tampa Pro victory, man. It's um, a true pleasure. And hopefully we can tee up another one of these prior to the 2022 Mr. Olympia. I'd love to see you back in that first call out once again, man. Thank you so much, man. That's a pleasure. So for Xavier Wills and Akeem Williams, we are out.